Morning, Miss. Morning. Okay, so welcome to our class. If you are still trying to log in, log in, join the meeting. Uh, so kita bagi sedikit ruangan kepada yang mau join. Yes, morning, Amber. Morning, Isati. And, and and yes, morning, Samad. Yang tuluan buka mic. Okay, so as I mentioned in the group, we are going to discuss the pre-UPS2 answers. Last night, all of you have already completed the pre-UPS2 quiz atau Google Form. Kamu semua sudah jawab. Ada yang dapat full mark juga, tapi ramai yang di bawah 10. And a few were like ngam-ngam 10 atau 11, begitu. So, can be better. Okay, the questions will be very similar during the real UPS2. So I hope that uh, you can come back to this revision after some time. Sekarang, uh, kamu belum lagi dapat score kamu, but if you key in the right email, you should be able to get it once our lecturers re release the score. Tapi bukan terpulang sama saya lah, terpulang kepada ketua uh, ketua pencara yang handle pick. Google Form ini. Saya tahu kita punya krisis air semakin menjadi lagi. Uh, tapi kita teruskan juga dengan kelas hari ini. For this week, regardless of the water situation, all classes will still be face to face. But if you have any problem, uh, just PM me on the, on the side. If you message me, I will consider that. Okay lah, boleh kasih maaf lah. Kalau menghilang tanpa kabar yang saya akan tanda sebagai ponteng. All right, we have 39 people. Are any people sharing devices? Any of you sharing devices? Please let me know in the chat. Tiada yang sedang share device. Kalau tiada, it's okay. Okay. Sekarang ada 42 orang sudah. Okay, shall we just continue with the lesson? Thumbs up if you think we continue with the lesson. Okay, ramai juga yang continue. Okay, in that case, uh, once again, good morning. Let's get started with our discussion or just a, a quick review explanation of the questions from last night's pre-UPS. So, semua sudah jawab. Saya boleh teruskan dengan masuk ini Google Form. All right, so these were the questions that you answered last night. It covered several topics. It covered chapter 3, 4, 5, and 6, which is something that we've all finished until last week. So, sepatutnya... Semua boleh faham dan boleh jawab. So, mari kita tengok soalan nombor satu. Which selection results in dog breeds such as the bulldog, the Afghan shepherd, the pit bull and the rottweiler? So, kalau daripada nama-nama uh, ini, kamu tidak tahu apa itu Afghan shepherd, at least you heard of bulldog, you heard of pit bull before. Rottweiler, kalau tidak tahu dia punya bentuk macam mana, is okay. After this, you can Google. Okay. Tapi semua ini adalah bakar anjing. They are different breeds of They are different breeds of dogs, but they are all still dog. So kenapa ada anjing yang boleh berlainan rupa? Which of these selections is going to be caused by that? The best answer for this one is going to be artificial selection. Sebab macam mana anjing kita boleh ada bakar-bakar yang berbeza, kita yang sengaja kasih kawin dia dengan bakar ini, kasih kawin dengan bakar itu. So that's how we get different breeds. Okay, manusia yang kasih biak dia mengikut kesesuaian atau kemahuan manusia. So question one, the different dog breeds are results of artificial selection. Any problems with question one before I continue?
Okay, then we go on to question two. Which prezygotic barrier has a correct match? So kita tengok di sini, birds have different courtship display. Different courtship display, contohnya ada burung yang dia mau tunjuk dia punya tarian, ada yang mau tunjuk dia punya nyanyian. Okay, those are different courtship display to let the other sex know that they want to have meeting. Uh, that is not mechanical isolation. Different courtship display adalah behavioral isolation. A hybrid died before reaching sexual maturity. Dia mati sebelum dia boleh uh, membiak secara seksual. That is reduced hybrid viability. Tapi reduced hybrid viability adalah post-zygotic barrier. Soalan tanya mana satu adalah pre-zygotic barrier yang betul pasangan dia. So number two is also wrong. Pollen of a flowering pl plant cannot fertilize the egg of a nearby flowering plant. Okay, the bunga daripada bunga ini sampai kepada bunga yang kedua. Tapi dia punya pollen grain, dia punya the bunga tidak dapat fertilize. That is the problem with the gamet. Gamet dia tidak kenal satu sama lain. So yes, number C is correct. This is gametic isolation. Kita tengok juga option yang D. Fruit flies that made in different locations. Kalau dia mengawan, dia berasal daripada tempat berbeza dan dia mengawan di tempat yang berbeza, itu adalah uh, habitat isolation. So, bukan temporal isolation. The correct answer for question 2 is C, gametic isolation. Mungkin ada yang salah sebab dia tengok macam B dengan C ni betul, tapi sebenarnya C lebih betul, B adalah post-zygotic barrier. If you have no questions, I am going to continue. Okay, I'm going to continue. Question 3. Which statements are true about the processes that lead to speciation? Apakah yang uh, menyebabkan penghasilan spesies baru dan adakah ayat dia ini benar? Mari kita tengok ayat nombor 1. Allo polyploid can overcome sterility in hybridization. Kalau kamu hasilkan haiwan yang hybrid atau tumbuhan yang hybrid, kemungkinan bilangan kromosomnya tidak sama. Jadi dia tidak dapat menghasilkan gamet. Yeah, if they don't have the same number of chromosomes, then they would not be able to produce gametes. But if your organism somehow does allo polyploidy, dia tiba-tiba dapat gandakan bilangan kromosom dia, then yes. It can overcome the sterility problem. Dia akan uh, menyelesaikan masalah mandul itu sebab organism itu sekarang boleh hasilkan gamet yang sihat. So one is correct. Number two, genetic drift refers to a constant allele frequency within a large population over generations. Two is wrong because constant allele frequency adalah Hadi Weinberg yang semester lepas. Genetic drift adalah apabila ada perubahan allele frequency. When there is a change in the allele frequency, it can be a large population, it can be a small population, but not over generations. It is over a short period of time because of random or chance events. Dia akan ambil masa yang singkat sebab ada malapetaka yang berlaku. So two, wrong. We look at number three. Rapid diversification of species from a common ancestor when encountering new environments and resources is an adaptive radiation process. Adaptive radiation adalah yang contoh Galapagos finches itu. Dalam lecture note kamu, okay, satu spesies burung ini sampai kepada beberapa pulau. Pulau ini lain persekitaran dia, lain makanan dia. Jadi, Lama kelamaan spesies burung yang ada di sana, ah, bentuk paruh dia begitu. The big shape is like that. And then the second island, different environment, different resources. So after many generations, same species of bird but have different morphology. So itu adalah contoh adaptive radiation. That means point number one and point number three are correct. So jawapan adalah satu dan tiga sahaja. Do you have any questions or any problems? No, miss. 
Okay, very nice. Then let us continue to the next question. Okay, sekarang kita masuk kepada chapter 4. Sudah. 4. Which of the following statements is not true regarding enzymes? A. Apoenzyme is an inactive enzyme that requires cofactor to become active. B. Active sites of enzymes is highly specific. C. Enzymes speed up the rate of activation energy. And D. Enzymes is a globular protein that acts as catalyst. I would like to ask for Joyce. Joyce, can you answer this question? Joyce? Mana satu penyataan yang kamu rasa tidak benar? Which of these is not true regarding enzymes? Kalau Joyce tidak ada atau tidak dapat jawab, Felicia? Ya, Mi. Felicia, tolong jawab yang soalan nombor empat. Which one you think is not true regarding enzyme? Mm, enzymes speed up the rate of activation energy. Okay, yes, that is the correct answer. Tapi kenapa ayat ini tidak benar? Why you think this sentence is wrong? Jeffrey. Ataupun kalau Felicia tidak dapat jawab, siapa lagi saya boleh tanya? Ah? Hmm. Hmm. Alia ada? Dayang Alia Sofia? Did you figure out why it's it's the answer, Felicia? Not yet, Miss. <laughs> Alia belum ada. Alia belum jumpa unmute button. Okay. Kalau bukan kamu dua. Siapa saya boleh panggil ni? Bradley? Hmm. Then I go on to H20. Aiman Hakim. Aiman, do you know why C is the Answer, apa masalah dengan ayat ini? Miss, boleh saya cuba jawab ke Miss? Boleh, boleh. Um, enzyme tu dia speed up rate of metabolic reaction tapi dia lower activation energy. Correct. Very good answer, Pamela. Okay, so ayat dia di sini, kamu rasa macam betul dalam dalam lecture notes sebab dia kasih gabung dua statement. Tapi ayat dia di sini tidak betul sudahlah. Yang betul adalah enzyme speed up rate of reaction. Dia mempercepatkan kadar reaction. Ya. Yeah. Ataupun dia kasih rendah activation energy it lowers the activation energy kalau aku cakap begini enzyme speed up the rate of activation energy the sentence does not make sense so the answer is c 
Okay, thank you for your participations. Okay, kalau tidak dapat, kalau tidak tahu kenapa betul, tapi somehow you pick the right answer, it's okay. Now we go on to the next question. Question number five. Which of the following statements regarding cofactors is correct? A. Cofactors are protein molecules required for enzyme activity. B. Cofactors serve a substrate for enzymatic reactions. C. Cofactors can be either organic or inorganic substances. And D. Cofactors inhibit enzyme activity by blocking the active site. Mari kita tengok setiap jawapan ini, adakah dia punya option ni betul ataupun salah. Aiman, Aiman Hakim, since you are here, uh, tell me, yang option A ni betul ke salah? Co-factors are protein molecules required for enzyme activity. Remember, if you tell me if it's right or wrong, you have to tell me why it's right or wrong. Wrong. Okay. Apa yang salah dalam ayat ini? Because soalan tanya pasal cofactor, fix your sentence, Aiman. Enzyme adalah protein. Cofactor adalah benda yang tolong protein. Tapi cofactor bukannya protein. Yes. Alright. So Aiman's answer in the chat is uh, the statement A is wrong. Cofactor is not a protein. Alright. So A bukan jawapan yang kita cari. Kita tengok kepada option B. Cofactor serve a substrate for enzymatic reaction. For this one, Scarlett, Scarlett are you here? Scarlett, if you are here, if you are among us, can you please tell me that this sentence is right or wrong? Wrong. Why you think it's wrong? Apa yang salah pada ayat? Cofactors serve a substrate for enzymatic reaction. Can you answer this one? Okay, never mind Scarlett, thank you. Okay, yang jawapan dia adalah sangat senang actually. Kenapa dia salah? Sebab cofactor memang bukan substrate. Macam saya bilang tadi, cofactor adalah benda yang tolong enzyme buat kerja. It is a molecule that can activate the enzyme before it can do the reaction, but it is not the substrate. Okay, all right, good answer, Scarlett. We go on to C. Cofactors can be either organic or inorganic substances. Ini kamu rasa betul ke salah? Siapa rasa betul? Kau yakin, Aiman? Yakin, Miss. <laughs> Okay, bagus. Dia tidak kena psycho. Yes, cofactors can be either organic or inorganic substances. That means 
For D, it is incorrect. Cofactors inhibit enzyme activity by blocking the active site. Ini bukan cofactor. Benda yang inhibit enzyme activity adalah inhibitor. Okay, so D is incorrect. Answer is, for question number 5, is C. Now we go on to question number 6. Which of the following statements are true about inhibitors? No, the thumbs does inhibitor. Number one, inhibitors decrease the rate of enzymatic reactions. Number two, competitive inhibitors bind to the active site of the enzyme and change its shape. And number three, non-competitive inhibitors bind to the allosteric site of enzyme and change the conformation of enzyme's active site. Mari kita tanya satu orang, Siti Nurliana, are you here? Liana, can you give the answer for question six? Which of the following statements are true? Liana, are you here? Liana is not here. Hmm. Shafika, Shafika, are you here? It's almost 8 o'clock, so I'm going to just go speed up this thing. All right, so for question 6, 1, inhibitor decrease the rate of enzymatic reactions is true, betul. Okay, Shafika jawab D. We are going to look at question 2, uh, statement number 2. Competitive inhibitors bind to the active site of the enzyme and change its shape. And number three, non-competitive inhibitors bind to allosteric site of enzyme and change conformation of enzymes active site. Jawapan Shafika adalah D, tapi jawapan yang sebenar adalah satu dan tiga. First time saya jawab pun, saya ingatkan jawapannya adalah D. Tapi lepas berbincang dengan pensyarah lain, rupanya jawapan yang sebenar adalah satu dan tiga. Heh, sebab... Yang ini, competitive inhibitor bind to active site of enzyme and change its shape. Tidak betul sebab maksud change its shape di sini adalah mengubah bentuk active site. And that, therefore it is not as correct. Sebab saya tanya juga pencara tu, bukankah ini dikaitkan dengan induced fit? Dia bilang no. This question is not related to induced fit. Ini adalah pasal mencacatkan bentuk enzim. So she was like, number two is wrong. And I'm like, okay. So okay. The real, yeah. So the real answer is one and three. Okay, now we move on. Question number seven, kita sudah masuk kepada cellular respiration. So for cellular respiration, dia adalah topik yang banyak marka. Dalam UPS juga, dia akan bawa tujuh marka. So quite a lot. Half of the UPS 2 is going to be about chapter 5. Which of the following stages does not involve decarboxylation? Remember, decarboxylation adalah kita kasih keluar carbon dioxide daripada sesuatu molekul. Glycolysis, tiada decarboxylation. Pyruvate oxidation, ada decarboxylation. Krebs cycle pun ada decarboxylation. Alcohol fermentation pun ada decarboxylation. So the only answer for question 7 is A, glycolysis. We go on to question 8. Which of the following statements regarding to substrate level phosphorylation is not true? Apa yang tidak benar berkaitan dengan substrate level phosphorylation? D. Yes, correct. 
A, B, and C are all correct. So the only answer for question 8 is D. Pandai si Ivan kasi laju perbincangan. Then we go on to question 9. Which of the following is true regarding the number of carbon dioxide released during complete oxidation of one glucose? Complete oxidation means kita kasi abis itu uh, itu glucose. Dan sekarang kita tengok setiap stage ini, setiap peringkat, berapa biji carbon dioxide yang dihasilkan. Glycolysis, no carbon dioxide release. Pyruvate oxidation, yes. Krebs cycle, yes. Oxidative phosphorylation, tiada carbon dioxide release. Jawapannya antara B dengan C saja. Dan ini kamu perlu ingat berapa biji carbon dioxide yang ada dalam stage tersebut. The correct answer is pyruvate oxidation will release two molecules of carbon dioxide. Okay, now we go on to question 10. What is the role of oxygen in aerobic respiration? Anyone See. answer? Yes, correct. For aerobic respiration is a final electron acceptor. Nanti dia akan gabung itu elektron dengan proton, which is H+. Dia akan jadi molekul air. Everything else is not correct. We go on to question 11. Which of the following is a correct ma match regarding its electron carrier? Krebs cycle. Krebs cycle. Kenapa yang lain salah? Apa yang salah pasal A? Okay, mungkin ada yang ada jawapan, tapi dia segan mencakap ataupun tidak. Uh, for this one, it is asking which is correct about its electron carrier. Untuk Krebs cycle, ya, dia hasilkan NADH, ya, dia hasilkan FADH2. Tapi yang lain ini, glycolysis memang hasilkan NADH dengan ATP. Masalahnya, ATP is not an electron carrier. NADH sejak yang electron carrier yang terhasil dari glycolysis. Pyruvate oxidation, the product is correct but only NADH is electron carrier. CO2, not electron carrier. Lactate fermentation, yes, you make NADH. Yes, ADP is produced but ADP is not electron carrier. So the answer is 11, the C. We go on to question 12. Masih lagi pasal cellular respiration. Which of the following are products formed in Krebs cycle from four molecules of pyruvate? So kamu perlu rujuk balik nota kamu, kira balik berapa biji untuk four molecules of pyruvate. One, two, Any and answers? Three. One, two, and three. Okay, so from Krebs cycle, you would one Krebs cycle will produce one ATP, one Krebs cycle produces one FADH2, one Krebs cycle will produce three NADH plus H plus. So semua kali empat betul. The answer for question 12 is one, two, and three. Good job. Now we go on to question 13. Which of the following processes are involved during pyruvate oxidation? Any guesses? Uh, one and two, miss. Very good. Yes. The answer is one and two, oxidative decarboxylation, then attachment of coenzyme A. Tiga, bukan semasa pyruvate oxidation. Okay, itulah tujuh soalan untuk cellular respiration. Sekarang kita pergi kepada tiga soalan fotosintesis. Question 14, which of the following components is required for light independent reaction? For this one, I should pick someone's name. Haryanti hmm. <laughs> ada? 
Parenti, if you're with us, can you try to answer this question? Question 14. Which is required for light independent reaction? Adakah dia foton, carbon dioxide, ADP, ataupun water? Kalau bukan Haryanti, Shazana? ADP, Miss. Haryanti. Required for light independent reaction dari option ini. Cuba tengok balik. Foton, Miss. Light independent reaction, Haryanti. Okay, Shafira tolong, uh, sudah tolong di dalam chat. So, Shafira to this CO2. Yes, correct. The answer is CO2. Photon and water is what you need for light-dependent reaction. ADP adalah molecule yang tiada tenaga sudah. So, we cannot use it for this one. For light-independent reaction, kita perlu guna carbon dioxide dan kita akan buat Kelvin cycle. Ataupun uh, nama lain Kelvin cycle is like independent reaction, yeah? Okay, so good try, Haryanti, and thank you, Shafira. Now we go on to question 15. Which of the following is true about photosystem 1? Sharyan Shah? Sharyan, are you here? Are you exist? Ataupun Shazana? Miss, Miss. D. Ah, okay. It's true about photosystem 1. Kamu cakap jawapannya adalah D. Yes, the answer is correct. The answer is D. A salah sebab dia bukan terletak dalam thylakoid lumen. Kalau kamu dengar perkataan lumen, lumen means bahagian dalam. So if you have a tube, bahagian kosong di dalam tube adalah lumen. Kalau kamu ada thylakoid, contohnya you have a thylakoid in here, like this is your thylakoid, you buka di dalam. Bahagian dalam itu adalah lumen. Reaction center pigment for PS1 is P700. P680 is for PS2. Dan PS2 yang akan buat photolysis of water, PS1 tidak buat photolysis of water. So correct answer for question 15 is D. Last question 16, which of the following alternative pathways are true for reducing photorespiration in each plant? For oh, this one, ada siapa-siapa mau, mau menanya? Eh, menanya, mau menjawab? Mana pasangan yang betul? Amber jawab D. Yes, that is correct. Maze is another word for corn. Corn uses C for pathway, yes. Pineapple, camp pathway. Paddy uses C3 pathway. Semalam, macam ada orang tanya saya, Miss, kita tidak belajar pasal C3 pathway. Excuse me, C3 pathway is the normal photosynthesis, I said. And I explained last night also. Tapi bagi yang masih bingung, saya kasih tidak bingung kamu sekarang. C3 pathway adalah photosynthesis biasa. Dia termasuk tumbuhan biasa macam pedi dan kebanyakan tumbuhan yang kamu nampak di luar itu. Dia akan gunakan Kelvin cycle biasa, tiada lagi benda-benda tambahan. Disebabkan dia adalah fotosintesis dan Kelvin cycle yang biasa, 
dia ada risiko untuk buat photorespiration. Kalau C4 pathway, C4 pathway adalah dia tambah satu step sebelum dia buat Kelvin cycle yang biasa. Chem pathway juga tambah satu step sebelum dia buat Kelvin cycle yang biasa. So yes, we did learn about C3 pathway. It is the normal stuff, the normal Kelvin cycle you learn in 6.4. Okay, saya boleh hantar saya punya jawapan. Yes, I have checked my answers. Submit. And I can view my score. Okay, saya ada salah satu. Uh, <laughs> minta maaf. Uh, hold on, I have one wrong answer. Mana saya berjawapan? Baiklah, yang kita bincang dari soalan 1 sampai soalan 15 tadi, tiada masalah. Okey, soalan 1 sampai soalan 15, no problem. Soalan 16 saya salah tadi. Maze is C4 pathway, pineapple is chem pathway, paddy is C3 pathway. Tapi soalan tanya, which of the following alternative pathways are true? Uh, disebabkan C3 adalah pathway biasa, C3 bukanlah alternative pathway. Alternative pathway hanya untuk option 1 iaitu C4 pathway dan option 2 iaitu chem pathway. Tapi tolong ingat juga lah tumbuhan apa yang kamu ada uh, untuk setiap pathway. So the real answer is 1 and 2 only. But the real UPS will be a, more, a lot more clear compared to the pre-UPS. Yang penting kamu ada buat revision sebelum kamu punya UPS 2. Do you have any questions before I let you go? Sorry to lebih masa pula. Okay, if you have no questions and no problems, that's all for today's Google Meet. I will see you again during tutorial, whenever that is. Thank you very much for your time and your attention. Please go. Bye-bye. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. Thank you, Miss. Thank you. Yeah, Joyce, cukup sudah love to Joyce. Cukup. Cukup, Joyce. Thank you. Joyce, cukup. Thank you, Miss. Thank you.